Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inauguration of the 12th president of the University of Southern California, Dr. Carol L. Folt. The procession includes representatives from across the university community who will enter Alumni Park from the front of the Bovard Administration Building. They will march behind large cardinal and gold banners bearing the names of USC's constituent groups. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let the processional begin. California. These flags represent each of the university's degree-granting academic units and are carried by students from those units. The colorful symbols evoke the unique mission and legacy of each academic discipline. These particular designs have been used for nearly four decades and are traditionally displayed at major university celebrations, including commencement and new student convocation. from Bovard Administration Building. One column is led by the president of the faculty, Professor Rebecca Lonigan, who is carrying the silver university mace. The second column is led by Professor Donald Manahan, the university marshal. The procession includes trustees of the university in their cardinal gowns of office, senior vice presidents, and our special inaugural speakers and guests. Also seated on the platform and marching into Alumni Park at this time are the deans representing their schools. Dean Amber Miller, the USC Dana and David Dornsife College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Dean Catherine Quinlan, the USC Libraries. Dean Haven Lynn Kirk, the USC Roski School of Art and Design. Dean Robert Cudietta, the USC Thornton School of Music. Dean Laura Mosqueda, the Keck School of Medicine of USC. Dean Andrew Guzman, the USC Gould School of Law. Dean Avishai Sadan, the Herman Ostro School of Dentistry of USC. Dean Vasilios Papadopoulos, the USC School of Pharmacy. Dean Giannis Yortzos, the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Dean Karen Sims Gallagher, the USC Rossier School of Education. Dean Milton Curry, the USC School of Architecture. Interim Dean Garrett James, the USC Marshall School of Business. Interim Dean Suzanne Wenzel, the USC School of Social Work. Dean Elizabeth Daly, the USC School of Cinematic Arts. Dean Jack Knott, the USC Sol Price School of Public Policy. Dean David Bridell, the USC School of Dramatic Arts. Dean Willow Bay, the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Dean Pincus Cohen, the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. Dean William Holder, the USC Leventhal School of Accounting. 
Dean Robert Curieta, the USC Gloria Kaufman School of Dance. Dean Erica Mull, the USC Ivy and Young Academy. And Dean Anthony Bailey, the USC Bovard College. And marching at the end of the right-hand column, the 12th president of the University of Southern California, Dr. Carol L. Folt. Platform party is the parade of international flags. Since its earliest days, USC has opened its doors to the global community. These 117 flags represent the countries and areas from which our students hail and reflect the extraordinary diversity of our worldwide Trojan family.
The next group to enter the park are the delegates representing our USC parents. They play a fundamental role in guiding and supporting our students and in ensuring that our university remains committed to helping students thrive. Included in this delegation are parent volunteer leaders, representatives of our fraternity and sorority parent groups, and members of our parent leadership circle. Ladies and gentlemen, the parents of USC. Representatives are now marching into Alumni Park. USC's first alumni association was founded in 1885, and today there are more than 425,000 USC graduates living across the country and around the world. The alumni delegates include the USC Alumni Association Board of Governors, the past presidents of the USC Alumni Association, the leadership boards of the Asian Pacific Alumni Association, the Black Alumni Association, the Latino Alumni Association, the Lambda LGBT Alumni Association, the Half Century Trojans, the Alumni Coordinating Council, and volunteer leaders of USC's many loyal alumni organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, our alumni delegates.
representing USC's many partners and supporters from Los Angeles and beyond. Working closely with our university, they make a difference in our neighborhood, our region, and our world. Included in the delegation are members of key advisory groups, the Keck Board of Overseers, and the Boards of Counselors of the university's academic units. These groups provide crucial support and expertise in helping us achieve our collective mission. Also marching on behalf of our community partners are members of the Community Advisory Council, Los Angeles civic leaders, local community leaders, community leaders for the arts, and Los Angeles religious leaders. Together, they help foster and strengthen USC's close ties to our city. delegates, we are especially pleased to welcome delegates from USC's family of schools. They represent the future of our community, as well as our shared commitment to creating meaningful opportunities for all of our neighbors. Joining us today are elementary school students from Murkison Street Elementary School and eighth grade NAI scholars from Fauché Learning Center accompanied by their teachers, parents, and staff. Let's give our youngest delegates a warm welcome, along with all of our community representatives. Welcome representatives of the staff of the university.
as they enter Alumni Park, we acknowledge the countless contributions of all of our dedicated USC staff members. Marching in their ranks are current and former officers of the Staff Assembly, staff and religious directors from the university's Office of Religious Life, and staff members who have worked at USC for more than 40 years. Ladies and gentlemen, our university staff. delegates representing the university's medical enterprise, including our hospitals. Collectively, they extend the university's impact in the medical community through stellar teaching, research, and patient care. This group includes representatives from Keck Hospital of USC, Norris Cancer Center, and Verdugo Hills Hospital. They are joined by delegates from Children's Hospital Los Angeles and Los Angeles County USC Medical Center, as well as delegates from academic units, including the USC School of Pharmacy and the Ostro School of Dentistry of USC, including the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy, and the Mrs. T.H. Chan Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy. Finally, marching with this group are the department chairs and heads of institutes from the Keck School of Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, the delegates of USC's medical enterprise. national and international academic delegates who are marching on behalf of their colleges, universities, and academic societies. Among them are presidents and chancellors of renowned institutions, leaders of venerable learned societies, and representatives of our esteemed peers across the United States and abroad. Many have traveled far to join us for our special celebration, and we thank them all for being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, our visiting academic delegates.
Now entering the park from Bovard Auditorium are delegates representing the students of the University of Southern California. They are led by cadets from the university's ROTC program with delegates from each branch of the armed services. The delegation includes representatives of undergraduate student government, graduate student government, residential life, including our residential advisors, USC trustee, presidential, Mork and Stamps scholars, USC athletics, recreational club council, campus activities, student media board, student equity and inclusion programs, orientation programs, the universities, fraternities, and sororities, and student religious organizations under the Office of Religious Life. In addition, the delegation includes representatives from the university's veteran, doctoral, and postdoctoral student communities. Ladies and gentlemen, our USC students.
And now, please welcome the faculty, retired faculty, and university and distinguished professors of the university as they approach from Brovard Administration Building. The procession of faculty includes provost and Whitney professors, as well as members of the Academic Senate, including its past presidents. The colorful academic gowns and hoods worn by the faculty represent the institutions from which they received their degrees. Please welcome the USC Dana and David Dornsife College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences, founded 1880. The USC Libraries, 1880. The USC Roski School of Art and Design, 1883. The USC Thornton School of Music, 1884. The Keck School of Medicine of USC, 1885. The USC Gould School of Law, 1896. The Herman Ostro School of Dentistry of USC, 1897. The USC School of Pharmacy, 1905. The USC Viterbi School of Engineering, 1905. The USC Rosier School of Education, 1909. The USC School of Architecture, 1919. The USC Marshall School of Business, 1920. The USC School of Social Work, 1920. The USC School of Cinematic Arts, 1929. The USC Soul Price School of Public Policy, 1929. The USC School of Dramatic Arts, 1945. The USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, 1971. The USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology, 1975. The USC Leventhal School of Accounting, 1979. The USC Gloria Kaufman School of Dance, 2012. The USC Ivy and Young Academy, 2013. And the USC Bovard College, 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, the faculty of the University of Southern California.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors and the performance of the national anthem by Amanda Rindlisbach. Please remain standing for the invocation by our Dean of Religious Life, Varun Soni. Thank you. Just like we rehearsed, I appreciate that. <laughs> Earlier this month, Hindus around the world celebrated the festival of Ganesh Chaturthi, which honors the beloved Hindu deity Ganesha. Throughout India and throughout the world, Ganesha is worshipped as a patron of the arts and sciences and is the embodiment of intellect and wisdom. Known as the remover of obstacles, he is often invoked to bless new endeavors, new journeys, new adventures, new beginnings. Later this month, Jews around the world will observe Rosh Hashanah, which marks the beginning of the Jewish New Year. This is a time of celebration and contemplation ushered in by the triumphant sound of the shofar. Rosh Hashanah is also the start of the High Holidays, a holy time of compassion and community, of affirming shared hopes and dreams, and of translating values into action. Today we come together at a crossroads, standing between Ganesh Chaturthi and Rosh Hashanah, between our past and our future, with the shared privilege to write our next chapter and forge our new destiny. And today we come together at a milestone, 
to consecrate this historic moment with our presence and to vow that we will support and sustain our new president as she leads us forward with dignity, humility, and grace. During this extraordinary time of new beginnings, may Ganesha remove the obstacles from our path and bless us all on our new adventure. And during this auspicious time of reflection and renewal, may the spirit of Rosh Hashanah guide us as we transform the world by transforming ourselves. As we come together today to celebrate the inauguration of President Carol Folt, may all of us be inspired to bring our own gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we recognize once again that we are not isolated beings, but deeply connected in mystery and in miracle to this university, to this community, and to each other. And may we all say together, amen. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, please be seated. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Right on. Well, folks, it's a great day to be a Trojan. Today is a day filled with hope and joy and with light and with love. But it was a very long and difficult road for us to get to this exciting moment. And none of it would have been possible without the courage, vision, and perseverance of the chair of the USC Board of Trustees, Rick Caruso. His love and dedication to this university, his beloved alma mater, is an extraordinary gift to all of us. And we all, when we all owe him an enormous debt of gratitude for his service and for his leadership. And so please join me in welcoming and thanking the distinguished chair of the USC Board of Trustees, Mr. Rick Caruso. Let's hear it for Rick. Thank you so much for those kind words. I'm going to go a little bit off script to start out. First of all, that was the most impressive procession that I have ever experienced. So I think we should all have a round of thanks to our event planning staff who coordinated all of that. I think they I think they had uh, some of you lined up all the way back to UCLA, so I want to take, thank the Chancellor of UCLA who's with us here today. I also want to thank the great USC band and Dr. Bartner for being here today, for not taking a break for 45 minutes. That was impressive. Carol, I don't know about you, but I think everybody is very excited about today and about you. So I want to welcome you, Carol, and welcome your family, all the students who are here, the amazing amount of faculty that have shown up which show the kind of excitement and support, Carol, that you have, the staff, the community leaders, our great mayor, Mayor Garcetti, thank you for being here. Our fellow trustees, friends, and supporters. This is a joyous occasion. It's the inauguration of the 12th president of USC. But I want to say a few words this morning, and I want to speak to you about redemption. Redemption is the act of recovery, of reclamation, of repossession. It is the work of retrieving something that has been lost. We are here today because we love this university, each and every one of us. And it's because of that love, and not in spite of it, that we are here knowing that something has been lost. We are here to get it back. As an institution, I believe we lost our humility for a while. It was Gandhi who said, quote, that it is unwise to be sure of one's own wisdom. It is healthy to be reminded that the strongest might weaken and the wisest might err. Needless to say, we've been reminded of that truth. And that, by the way, is what the road to redemption requires, truth. As the inscription on the clock tower of Mud Hall reminds us, 
Truth will make us free. The truth is that the university at times did not listen well enough. It did not always hear the voices that mattered the most to us. And that struck at the very foundation of honor and integrity upon which this institution was built. Redemption requires we look inward, and we have. But it also requires that we look back to what made us special to begin with. This great university was founded by men of different faiths and different backgrounds. Where it started? One building, standing alone in an empty field with a simple belief in the power of education. Their mission was, and our mission is, the development of human beings and society through the cultivation of the human mind and the human spirit. Our founding charter, of this institution states, quote, in every respect for the equal education of both sexes. In fact, the school's first valedictorian in 1884, Minnie Miltimore, was a woman. Today, more than half of our undergraduates are women. And in a few moments, a woman will be sworn in as our permanent president. For the first time in the history of this university. We thrive in diversity. A quarter of our students are people of color. And nearly as many have come here from around the world. And each of us are better for it. We have a vitality that you can feel, a hum that you can hear when you step on this campus. We have become a powerhouse of technology, of media, of medicine, and many other disciplines. We are one of the most prominent research institutions in the world. We affect and are responsible for countless lives, students, faculty, and staff, as well as those who work and live in the city around us. This is who we are at our best. That original building may have stood in an empty field, but it was integrated into the fabric of the community. And today, we must be too. Redemption requires admission and contrition, but mostly it requires action. After the most turbulent period in USC's history, today is a reflection on the actions we have taken and the work that will begin anew. We are in the midst of reweaving and restoring the original fabric of this great university. A deeper commitment to the students, a stronger integration with the community, a return to the humility of our founding. Over the past year, our interim administration, led by Dr. Wanda Austin, I agree with that. <laughs> Did an amazing work in repairing the tears of the fabric. So today, we mark a renewal of this university's commitment, not just to education, but to each other. And I can think of no better person to lead that effort than Dr. Carol Folt. <laughs> I agree with that, too. <laughs> I have to mention, there was an extensive search. It began with more than 100 exceptional candidates. The search committee unanimously selected Dr. Carol Folt, and the Board of Trustees unanimously agreed. Dr. Folt has an extraordinary vast array of skills, the kind that are so critical to leading a university, but so difficult to find in a single person. She will be the kind of university president that will put her students at the center of every decision she makes. The, the kind of person who will personally lead a culture change on this campus. For the students that are here today, I want you to know that you have an advocate. You have a role model. You have a mentor in Dr. Folt. She will have your back. I have seen it with her interactions with students. You just saw it a few minutes ago going down and taking pictures with the students. 
She loves her students. When faced with a decision, her North Star is to ask, what is the right choice for our students? The Board of Trustees and the Search Committee also met and listened carefully to all the university constituents. They were all very clear. They want a president who will listen. They want someone who will engage with transparency and meaning. They want a university climate where all students, faculty, and staff feel welcome and honored and safe and appreciated. They want a president who can be a standard bearer in the community for what is moral and just and great leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to say that we have found that person who can be all those things at once. Dr. Folt is truly one of a kind. And most importantly, what I have come to know personally, she is deeply ethical, a highly responsible leader who will have no trouble in doing what's right in the face of what's easy. When I think of Dr. Folt, I am reminded of Tommy Trojan, just over there. When I look at that statue, I see the qualities of strength, of courage. I see clarity and purpose. I see faithfulness to ideals, principles, and truth. What I see is Dr. Folt. I think she's been hiding all along as a Trojan. But we found her, and thank God she's here. So on behalf of the USC Board of Trustees, I am honored to welcome all of you and welcome her. She has our fullest confidence and our warmest wishes. And now, to wish her well, we have representatives from the student body who would like to extend a message of greeting to Dr. Folt. Please welcome the president of USC's undergraduate student government, Trenton Stone, and the president of USC's graduate student government, Sky Farrell. Good morning. Thank you for those remarks, Chairman Crusoe. Um, would all the undergraduate students in attendance please stand up? <laughs> Within hours of being voted in as the president of USC, Dr. Folt prioritized meeting with the USG and GSG executive teams, a significant signal that students would be at the core of her presidency. Since then, she has undeniably continued to exemplify student-centered leadership. Obviously, the students are the center of this event right now. Um, and she's also exemplified a strong value-based commitment to the Trojan family. She has an ambitious vision for USC, and we are thrilled to work alongside her to make it an even better place to live to work, and to learn. On behalf of all USC undergraduates, I'm delighted to give our most enthusiastic welcome to President Folt. Fight on. And please be seated. <laughs> Would all of my fellow graduate and professional students please stand? I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Folt this past March after her announcement. My first few interactions with her showed that she has an infectious enthusiasm for students. I saw Dr. Folt begin her fact-finding mission. This is when I saw a glimmer of her as a graduate student. The way we approach learning about new environments, systems, and solving problems is influenced by the training we receive in graduate school. Dr. Folt has taken the time to learn about USC and its growing graduate student population. I am delighted that she is the 12th president of USC, and along with all of USC's graduate and professional students, I warmly welcome President Folt to this great university. Please be seated. Please welcome from the Executive Committee of the USC Parent Leadership Circle, Mr. Jeremy Richards. Would all the USC parents in attendance please stand? I can't see you. 
On behalf of the diverse and passionate Trojan parent community, my wife Joyce, who is somewhere out there, and I are honored to deliver this official parent welcome to Dr. Carol L. Fault on this historic occasion. We are grateful that our sons and daughters are receiving a world-class education here at USC, and we wish President Fault every success as she joins our Trojan family to lead it into an exciting new chapter. I stand with all USC parents as we extend our heartfelt greetings to President Fault and ask her to look after our students with commitment and compassion. Thank you. Please welcome the President of the USC Alumni Association's Board of Governors, Mr. Corey Berg. Can I please ask all of our alumni out there to please stand? <laughs> Dr. Fult, on behalf of all of the USC alumni who have the honor of being here on this very historic occasion and all the others around the globe, we welcome you with open arms and open hearts. The next chapter for our beloved alma mater is filled with extraordinary potential, and I can assure you that we are ready, we are willing to help you, our students, faculty, staff, and extended Trojan family realize your hopes and aspirations for USC. President Folt, more than 423,000 USC alumni welcome you to our lifelong and worldwide Trojan family. Fight on. Please be seated. Please welcome the President and CEO of the Los Angeles Urban League, Mr. Michael Lawson. Would all of the USC neighbors and community partners please stand? I am delighted to stand before you today on behalf of the Los Angeles Urban League as, as part of the inauguration of Dr. Carol Falk as president of this great institution. As a member of the Inauguration Advisory Committee, I've had the pleasure of meeting with Dr. Falk personally. And through that, I have been able to get a sense of who she is and who she will be as the 12th president of USC. Based on what I have observed, I know that Dr. Fult is a person of unwavering integrity, a leader who understands that as part of her job, she has a responsibility to comfort those who are afflicted by injustice and inequality, as well as an obligation to afflict those who have become so comfortable that they no longer understand that this is their responsibility as well. On behalf of the local community, and all of the community-based organizations that benefit from the philanthropic support that we receive from this great university for the benefit of the various communities that surround USC, I say to Dr. Wanda Austin, thank you for all that you have done. And to Dr. Carol Folt, thank you for what we know that you will do as the 12th president of this great university. Thank you. Please welcome the Dean of the Thornton School of Music and the Kaufman School of Dance, Dr. Robert Curietta. Thank you to all of our guest speakers for their inspirational words. We'll hear more, more from them shortly, but now I'd like to introduce three talented USC Thornton students who are going to perform. Our two featured singers, Natalie Shepard and LaMarcus Miller, are studying vocal performance. Natalie is a first year master's student and LaMarcus is working towards his doctorate. They are accompanied by pianist Alex Landsberg, a doctoral student in our Keyboard Collaborative Arts program. Today, we'll hear their rendition of My House by the renowned American composer, Leonard Bernstein. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Thornton students.
of stone, build my house of brick and mortar, make the ceiling strong, strong against the storm, shelter when the day. Please welcome the president of the USC Staff Assembly, Miss Erica Chesley. How about another round of applause for our terrific student performers? Thank you. So now would all of the members of USC staff please stand. We are so excited to be here in this place, in this moment, with you to welcome our new president, Dr. Carol L. Bolt. We are gathered here because we believe in this university, we believe in each other, and we believe in President Bolt. We wish you much success and personal fulfillment in anticipating the positive effect it will have on staff, student, and faculty experience. USC Staff Assembly offers our support in partnering with you on productive cooperation, culture transformation, and the creation of new traditions at USC, knowing the best is yet to come. On behalf of all USC staff members, we wholeheartedly welcome President Folt as we work together to achieve excellence each and every day. Thank you. You may be seated. Please welcome the president of USC Care Medical Group, Dr. David Pang. Would all the doctors, nurses, faculty, and staff of USC's medical enterprise please stand? Just over one year ago, I was fortunate to be one of 23 individuals representing different university constituencies who came together to identify the best person in the country to lead USC into the future. We each came representing our own interests, yet along the way, the process and the people whom we met transformed us. We began to see our university larger than ourselves. And in that newfound spirit of appreciation, we met then candidate Carol Folt. Not only did she have experience leading a medical enterprise to great success, but she was also critically 
a listener, and a problem solver. And she was full of enthusiasm, energy, and hope. And today, President Folt, as we celebrate your inauguration, we look to our future with great anticipation. The Keck School of Medicine and the entire USC medical enterprise stand together as we congratulate President Folt on this historic day. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our distinguished academic delegates will now give a special greeting. Please welcome the Chancellor of the University of California, Los Angeles, Dr. Gene Block. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I'm truly deeply honored to be here today. You know, as much as UCLA and USC are often defined by our, our rivalry, there is much, much more that unites us, much more. We're both great institutions, among the very best institutions in the world. We're both committed to research that advances society, to teaching that provides opportunity, and to service that elevates our shared home in Los Angeles. While our athletic competitions often excite us, our academic collaborations will always inspire us. So in representing all of the higher education institutions assembled here today, I know that I speak for everyone in wishing President Folk success in her new positions. We all look forward to deepening our engagements with USC in the years ahead. We are truly excited that you are here. Congratulations. Thank you. Please welcome the president of the USC faculty, Dr. Rebecca Lonergan. Faculty, please stand. Good morning, everyone. I am excited to be here speaking on behalf of USC's 7,000 plus faculty. Um, as I stand here, my thoughts are drawn back to last year, um, like many of us, to the, my discussions with faculty as we were talking about what we wanted in the next president of USC. In a perfect world, she would be an experienced leader with the ability to uh, lead a huge, complex university like this, an accomplished scholar in her own right, and perhaps most important, a caring, compassionate person who could lead all of us with integrity. Uh, many did not believe we could actually find all of those qualities in one person. Uh, yet somehow we did, and that extraordinary person is our next president, Carol Folt. It is my honor and my pleasure to welcome Dr. Folt on behalf of our faculty as USC's next first female president and as a valued member of our faculty as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 42nd mayor of the city of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. Good afternoon, USC. Hello, Trojans and City of Angels. We are here perched on this precipice of possibility. You ask what history feels like, breathe it in. Like the air into our lungs, this is that moment. A moment of history not just for the Trojan family, but a moment of history in this great place we call the City of Angels. We have a new angel who is spreading her wings out amongst our city. Somebody who has come here at the right time, the right person, at the right moment. We all know here that in this City of Angels, where you are the geographic heart of the city at USC, may you too also become the spiritual heart of this city. 18 million people the third largest metropolitan economy on this globe. The world demands our leadership today, and our spirits need it, at a moment in which we face a future that is both exciting and uncertain. We seek leaders who come, who know how to lead with fearlessness, with humility, who know how to listen, and who can lead with love. That is who you have in Carol Folt. Marge Piercy, a great poet whom I love, once wrote that life is the first gift, love is the second, 
Understanding is the third. This place has made us all understand where we live and why we live a little bit better. My father, Gil Garcetti, is here, who grew up in the shadow of this place because my grandfather, an immigrant from Mexico, used to cut the hair of faculty, who then told him he should go to college. He got a scholarship and became the first to graduate from college in our family history right here on this campus. And then footsteps away, right there in that building in the nearest classroom that I can see, my first job was teaching, the School of International Relations at the Von Kleinsmith Center here. This is the kind of city where you can become the professor that used to sit in your grandfather's barber's chair. This is a kind of university where if you know your mission is not within the walls, but outside the walls, that you will continue to lead. Never doubt that you can change history. Marge Piercy also wrote, you already have. Madam President, you have already changed history. Next to a woman herself who has changed history, and thank you to Wanda Austin for her leadership. Thank you to Rick Caruso for his leadership and all the trustees and faculty. So at this moment of possibility, may you build a campus of belonging as we build a city of belonging and a world of belonging together. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Mr. Rick Caruso. I want to thank all of our delegates for their kind words of welcome to Dr. Fult. And Mr. Mayor, thank you for those great words. That was terrific. Thank you for being here. And Gil, thank you for being here. And congratulations. I'd like to now invite Dr. Fult and Dr. Wanda Austin to the podium, please. I must just tell you, as we're about to go through this ceremony, which I shared last night and Dr. Pang referenced, started with 100 candidates, took a while, about seven months, went down to 20. When Carol Folt walked in the room and met with the search committee, it was pretty much game over. The uh, attention to detail, the compassion, the belief in this university in the midst of we were going through, and the confidence in herself that she could lead this great university won us all over. You have earned this position through a long history of being a great leader. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present Dr. Carol L. Folt for installation as the 12th president to the University of Southern California. In Dr. Folt, we have found a leader of extraordinary integrity, compassion, and dedication. She was chosen at the right, as the right person to lead USC in this critical moment Today, I ask all of you gathered here to serve as witness to the transfer of this authority as the Board of Trustees presents to Carol L. Folt the university medallion stamped with the seal of the university and the symbol of power of the office. It is with great pleasure and by virtue of the powers vested in the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you Carol L. Folt, title of President, with all of the privileges and responsibilities that adhere thereto. President Folt, I know you will lead the university wisely and well. I am confident that you will serve it with dignity and distinction, exercising both your mind and your heart in building up the university, not only for this generation, but for those that follow. I call upon all of you as delegates and attendees this morning to endorse this solemn ceremony. As chairman of the Board of Trustees and on behalf of the entire university community, I welcome you, Dr. Folt, to the Office of President of Southern California. Carol, my deepest congratulations.
be seated. I have to say, this whole morning has taken my breath away. It has not left me speechless, though, so here goes. <laughs> ah, good morning, good morning. Just a few months ago, on a beautiful, crisp morning, just like this one, my husband David and I took a walk. Thank you. These are students talking about the Confederate monument at UNC. So. Thank you. I'm going to start over um, because I want, to, want you just to really to feel that. It's OK. You know, I do want to say that universities are open to students protesting. I always am, too. And I, I think we have to always remember that also. Thank you. But I do want to take you back to this amazing morning uh, just a couple of months ago where my husband David and I were taking a walk in Griffith Park. We were there that morning to witness a once in a decade or more event, the desert super bloom of 2019. Stretched across the beautiful green hills was a carpet of wildflowers. They were blue, orange, purple, there were just patches swaying in the breeze. And just 48 hours later, the USC Board of Trustees honored me with the great privilege of becoming your 12th president. My mind jumped back to those ribbons of color that were cutting through the hills and to the endless progress of renewal and evolution that they symbolize. And it made me think how universities and people blossom. And here I was to become part of the perpetual flowering of hopes and dreams that take place every day right here at USC. My heart really, truly is filled with gratitude to all of you, to Chairman Caruso and the board members, the board of trustees, to our students and our faculty and our staff, to our incredible community partners, to the academic leaders and the colleagues who are here today, and to my presidential predecessors. I want to thank every single one of you for building the USC that we celebrate today. Gloriously beautiful, global, incredibly diverse, and research intensive. I want to make a special thanks to Interim President and Trustee Dr. Wanda Austin. She's a very wise and trusting counselor. And we actually thought the real moment of history was that Wanda was the person that placed the medallion on me. Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> I also want to thank the incredible student performers and our faculty scholars who were giving their presentations on Wednesday and Thursday. And I want all of you to join me in thanking the teams of staff who have been doing every single thing they could to make this campus beautiful and ready to make this event special for me and for all of you. Please join me in thanking all of them. And now I'm delighted to say that I have family members from all of my families. I have family members from Dartmouth, my family from UNC, and my family from birth and marriage, right here together with now some of my fiercely loyal 423,000 strong Trojan family.
I have my sister, Lee, who many of you will probably be taking selfies with because you think she's me. We look so much alike. My brother-in-law, Larry. My brother, Bob, who I think is crying in the front row. My husband, David. My son, Noah. My daughter, Tessa, and little baby, Ellie, who could be crying in the front row but never is. Uh, I just want to say I love you all. To be president of the nation's, one of the nation's leading research universities in one of the most vibrant and growing regions of the world is humbling. But to be given that honor at a time of unprecedented social, economic, and technological disruption and discovery is the opportunity of my lifetime. I believe deeply in the power of education and exploration to change individual lives and to advance societies. And I have lived it. My grandparents immigrated from war-torn Albania to America via Ellis Island because they believed in American democracy and opportunity. They drilled, work hard, and get an education into my mom, and she drilled it into the five of us kids, and we did that, just like so many of you did. I've been so fortunate. My educational opportunities have taken me from the rainforests of Borneo to the High Sierra, working as a scientist with my students and colleagues on problems of ecosystem and human health, of climate change and conservation. As a university leader, I've worked with brilliant people to build new programs, to expand the arts, to reduce carbon and water footprints, yep. and to raise hundreds of millions of dollars in student financial aid. You know, I sometimes wonder whether my grandmother could have imagined such a possibility for her granddaughter as she was looking at the Statue of Liberty as she came into the harbor on the boat that brought her here. And then I think, yes, she could have believed that because she did believe that's what America was and it is what I still believe today. And as your president, thank you, I think we all believe that. I believe it today even more. And as your president, I want people from all circumstances and walks of life, including the immigrants and dreamers of today, I want all of you, all of them, to have opportunities like this, I want you to feel as welcome as I feel and as safe as I feel every day. It isn't that complicated, really. It starts with acknowledging that our diversity is our strength. At USC, we have so much to draw upon. And now I'm going to ask a few other people to stand. And in fact, it's a, just a different way at looking at all of you. We are so diverse. How many of you are first gen? Could you stand? Up here, too. How many of you served in a military or are still serving? Please stand. Transfer students, please stand. Whether you came from Los Angeles, please stand. Or the other side of the world, please stand. Or whether you got here because you learned about USC from your parents who worked here, or family members who came here, or you just fell in love with the Trojan spirit, please stand. Yes. And now you can sit. You, 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 you're all 
what makes the Trojan family so strong and so resilient. And when I see you today, I just feel the boundless possibility. You know, I have been buoyed up by the special energy here from the very first stroll. I took a pot across campus past Tommy Trojan, past the hammocks on the hill in McCarthy Quad, through the students skateboarding and uh, weaving and strolling their ways to class. I also saw the incredible care and love that come from our staff who keep our campuses so beautiful. I felt that, yes. I felt energy and purpose in my first visit to the Health Sciences campus, up and down those hills, past research centers that, where countless discoveries are taking place that save lives. And from the students and the faculty and the alumni and the families and the staff who will welcome me on campus, sometimes with tears in their eyes to tell me how much they love this place and want to help us to succeed, I gather from all of you optimism and energy, and I'm so grateful. I know that as long as you continue to channel your energy and your passion into purpose and joy, our future is bright. As you can imagine, I have been thinking about our future quite a lot. And what I see ahead arises so much from our distinctive history and our location. As you've heard, from the start, USC was designed to be part of the fabric of this great city. Our founders believed that a great city needed a great university and both would rise together. Our foundational principles were ahead of their time and they were to leverage the diversity of the city, to serve our communities, to strive for excellence and be innovative and entrepreneurial. As a result, USC has become a place where new trails are being blazed, old barriers are being toppled, and openness is cherished. Just think, 40 years before women could vote in America, our first valedictorian was a woman. 60 years, 60 years before the civil rights movement gained speed, our first African American graduated at the top of his class. And from the start, international students were respected members of our university. Opportunity for all wasn't perfect, and it certainly still isn't. But I'm confident that we can do much to advance our diversity and inclusion even further. And by doing so, I know that we will only get stronger and more relevant for the world of the future. Today, we're more than 80,000 strong that work here and are part of this university daily. Our students are wonderful. They're smart, creative, they're caring. You know, of all the students who have talked to me about what matters to them, they want to talk about helping other people, not themselves. It's always about other people. That is so striking and it is so inspiring. Our faculty push boundaries. It was electrifying. If you had a chance to listen to the TED Talks at HSC and UPC earlier this week, it was inspiring to see how they and their colleagues and their students are leading game-changing and often very brave efforts in so many fields. And of course, our talented staff are integral to everything that we do. Because of you, USC has made enormous strides, especially in the last two decades, by expanding our scope of our, and impact of our research, our arts, our social sciences, clinical practices, and so much more nationwide. And our victories on the field are legendary too. Yeah. But like Skye said, I think the best is yet to come. Finally, 
Our recent growth could simply not have happened without the generous support of our alumni and our devoted Trojan family. Not only did their support allow us to do so many things, including to renovate the historic LA Memorial Coliseum without a dollar of public money, their philanthropy makes it possible for USC to provide more than $600 million every year in student aid, placing USC as number one among leading private universities in terms of the dollars put towards aid. So it's not surprising that I'm very confident that we have the expertise, the optimism, and the passion to build an extraordinary future. But we need that same set of characteristics to move decisively to address the serious issues that we have yet to resolve. These are problems that have harmed our reputation and have taken a real toll on the Trojan community. I understand, I've been hearing the anxiety that many people are feeling, and they're worried that unless resolved quickly, these issues could do un undo much that has been built over the recent years and taint those unconnected to them. I want to assure you that we will continue to tackle these problems until they are corrected. We're going to do it with urgency, and we're going to do it with your involvement, with the involvement of the community and our governance structures. We'll continue the fabulous work of the Culture Commission and our new provost, Chip Zukowski, who's with us today, will begin immediately leading a team to overhaul our admissions and to supplement the many, many changes that have already been put in place. And I want to also say that we will be working with you on other critical issues that so many of you have brought forward, like faculty governance, sustainability, and I'll return to that, mental health services, and assistance for students who are hungry or in need. We're already taking meaningful actions together, but what I think is even more important, together we have to live those solutions. So, now to the future. Today, we're turning a page at USC. We're starting a new journey of exploration that will take this university and all the people who are part of it to amazing places. This is a time of seismic change. Digital technologies, AI, virtual reality, they have already expanded the possibilities in medicine, science, business, communications, in ways that were not even imaginable 10 years ago. Climate change has accelerated rapidly. Some say that we have less than a decade to respond without irreversible planetary ecosystem changes. Mass personalization, it sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it's when we take attention to individual needs at a mass scale. It's driving everything from how we personalize medicine, how, what, where, where we buy things, and maybe even how we learn about virtually anything. Virtually anything. Migration, changing work, war, environmental degradation, they are leading to the rise of megacities across the planet. 70% of people in the world will be living in a megacity in just 25 to 30 years. And of course, social media is dramatically reshaping the way we interact with each other at all levels, personal, professional, and political. We have a mandate right now, and that is to ensure that our students and faculty are prepared not only to thrive in dynamic times, but to ride and to actually drive the waves of change that are affecting all of society. This means nothing less than rethinking what our university should do and can do over the next decade. Albert Einstein once said, 
Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. We're at our best when we're sparking imagination. And when we're channeling that towards finding solutions that are innovative, sustainable, and just. We're already doing this by letting our students uh, work across disciplines and delve into different fields in all our top-rated schools. And this, of course, broadens perspectives and opens up new and unimagined possibilities. We should be pushing that into high gear. Just imagine unleashing the capacity of innovation everywhere. In concrete terms, I think we can establish this, this our big next decadal leap, by doing a number of things, but I'm going to mention four. One expanding access and affordability. By eliminating the burden of huge student debt for our graduates <laughs> to ensure that we remain a highly diverse and a welcoming place. Two, furthering sustainability. We have to start immediately to take effective and extensive action to reduce our carbon our water and our waste footprints, not only here at USC, but across the region and the world. Embrace, embrace our urban future. USC has an extraordinary opportunity to lead in the way that we help and anticipate and plan for a healthy urban future. How do we do it? We do it by leveraging the power and the strength of our schools in so many different ways, and this is so important, in complete partnership with our vibrant communities and our neighbors. And finally, we have to double down in areas where USC already has a distinct advantage. And I'm, this is a couple examples, but it's not limited to these. But we have to do it by building the incredible and fast-growing creative and technological economies right here, by leading in the transformation and practice of medicine in key areas like cancer, personalized medicine, and Alzheimer's disease. You know, I've been talking a lot about USC, but remember, our region and the other California universities, just those close by, are hotbeds of excellence and experimentation and imagination, and we need to collaborate more with them, too. People come from around the world to be a part of the change that happens here, and they are going to keep coming. And they come in part because of our democratic principles and freedoms, among them equality and free speech, and they come in part because of the principles that underlie our university, inclusion and openness, shared governance, experimentation, boldness, accountability and values. Those give us the moral compass that we need to navigate our future. And when we get it all right, when our values and our actions line up, the marvelous happens. And with that comes the joy and the fulfillment of life and work that we all seek. This is the decade of collaboration on warp speed. It's the decade that we eliminate barriers, the decade that we build more bridges, because I know that working as Trojans together, there are no limits on the power for change that we all have. Now, before closing, I want to say a few words about our home in Los Angeles. We're very honored to have Los Angeles Mayor Garcetti with us today. He and I had an amazing talk just last week about the future of the region and the vital role that USC can play. Thank you for that. We talked about the burgeoning creative and innovation economies. 
we talked about the really deep needs of our communities, about how we can work together to combat inequities in health, in wealth, and in education. And we agreed that every day that we delay on taking meaningful action on sustainability, we are pushing the environment into futures that we don't want for our kids or our grandkids or any of your families. When the eyes of the world are turned to LA in 2028 at the Olympics, USC will be front and center as a trusted partner for the future of LA and the future of the nation. There are so many iconic landmarks in this city. Who ever forgets the Hollywood sign or Felix? Uh, I love Felix. For me, though, one of the most poignant ones is the Watts Towers. This is it's beautiful. This fanciful collection of towers and sculptures was built over a 34-year period by an Italian immigrant, Simon Rodia as a kind of a valentine to his disadvantaged and neglected neighborhood. He assembled his towers from tiles, bits of glass and porcelain, small pieces of shell that he found. And very soon, his neighbors, strangers, and children began to bring him items that he could add to his towers. He named it Nuestro Pueblo, our town. When Watts convulsed with unrest in the 60s, the towers and the mosaics stood untouched, a symbol of beauty and resilience. I like to think of our diverse city and our diverse USC community as towers of strength and beauty standing side by side proudly displaying the colorful mosaics that we are, that capture the diverse essence of who we are and what we believe in. You know, a mosaic is all about a coming together, about finding strength and finding meaning and beauty in the totality and the proximity of each unique piece. So we rededicate ourselves today and in all the days ahead to a renewed sense of our community based on respect for the diversity of the world, to working with integrity, humility, and generosity, and always, always striving for excellence. Now, I want you to return with me for a moment, and I want you to fix in your memory that explosion of color that made up the super bloom of 2019. Every wild bloom is the product of millions of generations of evolution. And it rises from a seed bank that sits in the soil, ready for the right clues, cues, light, and water to germinate and to reach for the sky. Every bloom is different. And it's different not only because the environmental conditions change, because each new year, seeds disperse in from other places. And in turn, with every bloom, the flowers produce seeds that move out into the world. Our community, our Trojan family, forms a strong, diverse, and magnificent seed bank with the right conditions, conditions that we have the responsibility to create every single day, our capacity to blossom, to see our students blossom, to make real change, meaningful change in the world is unlimited. It is my honor and deepest privilege to walk down that path with all of you. I thank you and fight on.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Rick Caruso. You're fortunate that that's the last time you're going to have to hear that. Our ceremony comes to a close, but before it does, Carol, I think I share the, the thoughts of everybody here that we are inspired by your vision. We're grateful for the time and the energy that you're going to be giving us. We're going to support you in your dreams, and we thank you for making USC a much stronger, greater university, and we look forward to working with you for a very bright future. Our ceremony comes to a close. I want to thank everybody for being here today. It is a great day at USC. I will see you at the Coliseum, and we will have a great victory tonight. Fight on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alec David Four. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats while the platform party recesses. Thank you for attending the inauguration ceremony of USC's 12th president, Dr. Carol L. Folt. Please join us in McCarthy Quad for a university lunch celebrating our new president. Enjoy the rest of your day at the University of Southern California and fight on.